Our hymn of praise this morning is In the Garden, number 314. 214? 314. Three, one, oh, three, four. Four. Please stand if you're able. to worship is printed in your bulletin. If you'll read along with me, please. Come, let all of God's people give praise and worship the Lord. For the Lord is our shepherd who watches over us day and night. And the Lord guides us through all the days of, the, of life to the glory of God. Let no one doubt we are the faithful children of the living God. Let us commence for all to hear let us commend for all to hear the loving care of our God, of our good shepherd. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our affirmation of faith is found on page 882 of your pew hymnal. It's the uh, traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God for an opportunity for us to get together to worship God on this day, honoring and respecting our mothers for those we have alive as well as those who are deceased. May we share the memories of our past mothers, the, the person who substituted the mother in our lives, and we thank God for all mothers, mothering. We thank God. Let us come and pause for a moment of silent prayer. We thank you, God, for motherhood. We thank you, God, for all of the memories, oh God, that we hold dear in our hearts and our lives of our mothers, for those who are with us, as well as those who are not with us. We thank you, God, for surrogate mothers, oh God, for those who became a mother figure for us, oh God, and are today. And Lord, we just thank you, God, for this day, O oh God, for mothers have a hard road. They do so much, O oh God, as we read the 31st passage of Proverbs, a virtuous woman. All the chores she does, she makes sure she loves you, she prepares for a family and prays for her children. And God, many other characters, women characters in the Bible who became a mother's. Oh God, and we thank you. Even Jacob became a mother, even Abraham, as we look at them, oh God, in serving roles as mothers. And God, we just thank you, God, for the ability you give us all to be mothers, as we have children or not. We thank you, God, for those who have children as well as those who don't have children. For God, they can be a mother to others. And so, Lord, this day, O oh God, we dedicate to you. We pray, O oh God, you be in our service, be in our heart, be in our life. More importantly, O oh God, let the joy of your salvation rest in our hearts now and forevermore. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God is good. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Not all the time. God, God is good. good. For our special music today, uh, I'm going to ask Miss Roslyn to come up. Sebastian, also to come up, and of course, Elsie, <laughs> and um, let's make something beautiful to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. such a talented family in this Amen. church. Amen. From the youngest is there to the any, oldest. Yeah, is there any doubt that the fourth one that's on the way is going to be any less talented? <laughs> I don't think so. 
Anyway. Our New Testament lesson is from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43, found on page 120 in your pew Bible. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. And about that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room, then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Our epistle lesson is from Revelation chapter, um, sorry, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, found on page 235 of your Bible. The great multitude in white robes. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, <coughs> Salvation be belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power Amen. and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked them, these are white robes. Who are they? Where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Where they? Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And our gospel lesson is from John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30, found on page 98. <clears throat> Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. <clears throat> at Jerusalem, It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life, they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Sally for reading our scriptures. And now that we've heard the word of God, let us give to God ourselves, our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. <laughs>
ourselves to you. We offer ourselves. We offer also the gifts of tithes and offering to you, O oh God. And now, God, the people of all in your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Please, please, as you're able to. I'd like to have Verna come up. She's got a special tribute for our mothers today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The pastor asked me to, um, if I could write a paper on, for mothers today, and it made me think of my mother. And I said, sure, I can do that. My mother lived to be almost 100. She died four days before her 100th birthday. And it made me think, she did so much for me. I just never thanked her enough and uh, never hugged her enough. You know, maybe she'll hear me today. This is dedicated to all mothers. Mothers are special people. They obviously are very smart. They have the answers to hundreds of questions those little ones come up with. A mother is hardworking and on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sometimes for happiness, and welfare of her children, she's willing to sacrifice her personal dreams. But as my mother would say, uh, that's small potatoes. To be blessed with children is worth everything. Those well-earned wrinkles in your hands and face that show up in later life are badges of honor and proof of her deep love and devotion. I would like to share with you <clears throat> his story of how true friendship and great sacrifice inspired a famous painting. On the back of your bulletins is a picture of that painting known as the Praying Hands. Along about 1490, two young friends, Albert Dura and Franz Neistein, were struggling young artists. Since both were very poor, they worked to support themselves while they studied art. Work took much of their time, and advancement was slow. Finally, they reached an agreement. They would draw lots, and the one of them would work to support both of them while the other studied art. Albert won and began to study art while Franz labored to support them both. They agreed that when Albert was successful, he would support Franz, who would then study art. Albert went off to cities in Europe to study. As the world knows now, he had not only talent, but genius. When he had attained success, he went back to keep his bargain with Franz. But Albert soon discovered the enormous price his friend had paid. For as Franz had worked at hard manual labor to support his friend, his fingers became stiff and twisted. His slender, sensitive hands had been ruined for life. He could no longer execute the delicate brush strokes necessary for fine painting. Though his artistic dreams could never be realized, he was not embittered, but rather rejoiced in his friend's success. One day, Albert came upon his friend unexpectedly and found him kneeling with his gnarled hands intertwined in prayer, quietly praying for the success of his friend, although he himself could no longer be an artist. Albert Dure, the great genius artist, hurriedly sketched the folded hands of his faithful friend and later completed a truly great masterpiece known as the Praying Hands. Today, art galleries everywhere feature Albert Duras' works, but of them all, none holds the place in the hearts of the people that the Praying Hands does. It tells an eloquent story of love, sacrifice, labor, and gratitude, and it reminds multitudes the world around of how they also may find comfort, courage, and strength. That was written by J. Palmer Muntz. This story touches my heart deeply. 
Franz made a tremendous sacrifice and set an example of the meaning of love one another. Albert became the famous artist, but he in turn made his dear friend Franz the real hero. The world learned that Albert's very famous painting of those gnarled hands was inspired by his devoted, hardworking friend, Franz Nathan. The picture in itself tells a story of labor and love. Few people have such grace as these two friends, <clears throat> but the grace of mothers is to be celebrated. Mothers do their very best to provide their children with the necessary tools to become successful and responsible adults and to abide by God's examples of love and faith. However, I'm sure you will agree that there are times when mother's patience are greatly challenged. Murphy. For example, <laughs> mommy, look, I spilled some milk. My cup fell on the rug, but I've already cleaned it up. I used that big white jug. Dear Lord, that was my bleach. <laughs> Mommy, look at my new toy. I think you call these clippers. They make a noise and they take off hair. See what I did with whiskers? Dear Lord, he shaved the cat. <laughs> my son's Picasso art spread all across the wall. Where did he get his finger paints? I don't remember he had some. Dear Lord, not the grape jelly. <laughs> My son, he called me this morning. <laughs> I reminded him when he was four years old, he said, Mommy, I finally got that, uh, that darn tree cut down. I said, oh no, his toy carpenter's belt that he got for Christmas had a miniature saw in it. Dear Lord, not that little cherry tree I planted last year and it was doing so well. <laughs> May God bless all moms, the grandmoms, the foster moms, the surrogate moms, those who hope to become moms someday, even the moms of those furry pets that we love so much. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. <laughs> I was told we have some flowers to give out. So as I call the names, could you step up? I just learned about this here. Um, <laughs> this is how we roll. This is from Lauren. Would, um, do you want to come up and get them? Or do you want to get it later? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Is it on the front there? Oh, it's on the front. There it is. Kathy Wright. Okay, so that one is my name. <laughs> Do you want me to give Kathy? Yes, yes. All right. This one is for Colette. This is for Sally. Thank you, Vernon, for sharing as you did. And I pray and hope that we all heard something that amuses us or uh, the truth. Uh, I'm going to uh, share a few words uh, about mothers. I want to thank you for being here as mothers. I know you, if you have plans, I just pray and hope that you enjoy the day. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall what? 
rejoice in it and be glad. When I was reading through the Bible this past week, there are many stories uh, I could have preached from. But you know, you, most of you being biblical scholars, you are already familiar with all of them. Uh, one that I will lift up at this time was a praying mother, Hannah, who did not have a child. Prayed to God, and she did not just say a simple prayer, but she prayed. She pushed until something happened. It's the acronym PUSH. She prayed until something happened. And when Eli discovered her, he thought that she was a drunk, had, been, had too much wine to drink. But yet, she was in the spirit, but the spirit of God, and she prayed and asked for her to have a son. Her prayer worked. Her prayer worked because she did have a son, and she kept her promise to God, dedicated him back to God. Eli stayed in, in the temple. Samuel stayed in the temple and worked with priest Eli. Most mothers are like that. Uh, they pray. Suzanne and Wesley, the mother of both Charles and also John Wesley, um, she encouraged them and prayed with them every day, told them, taught them the word of God, and they prayed, and they prayed. The founder of Methodist movement was done by John Wesley and his friend, and they called the Holy Club, and they prayed, and they prayed. As little as they know, it became a reality. Who would thought that what he saw back today would be so big and so wide, come down through the ages, and still we call ourselves Methodists. We have a method in the way we worship. We have a method in the way we teach. We have a method in terms of serving God. And I thank God for, for a mother who was willing to encourage prayer. You know what, know what prayer will lead you to, how far it will lead you. When uh, my mother's deceased now, but I can still hear her in my mind, pray about it. Pray about it. When things begin to go north or south, pray about it. And I found comfort and knowing that she imprinted in my mind to pray. Not using it as a cop out, but and pray until something happens. Pray and believe. So we got examples of people who prayed until something happened. Mother teaches us how um, to pray. Also, mother teaches us how to be patient. We, were, we want things done yesterday. And yet, at the same time, they are not done. Taught us how to be patient. It's not your turn. I can remember as a child, we used to have play baseball and uh, chomping at the bits to get to the bat to get a hit at the baseball. And we were not patient enough. And I remember my mother said, you know, just be patient. Your time will come. And it did. Everybody wants to get up to the bat and hit, but at the same time, it doesn't happen overnight. As a child, I wanted to be grown. Boy, if I know what I know now. <laughs> I will retract those thoughts because there's a lot of responsibility in terms of a mother or child or a parent and we thank God for that, you know. And, and, you know, in their own way, they would use wisdom to sh tell us that, you know. Uh, I remember uh, one time my uncle said, son, you're eating your white bread now, not knowing uh, what it meant. I don't have nothing to worry about. I don't have bills to pay. don't have to worry about going out to work. But at the same time, we, my uncle, in a sense, could have been a father and mother as well because he taught me a lot of things. Uh, that I would not have known. Amen.
So now, also, a mothers are a good nurturer. They nurture you in the faith. John and Charles Wesley's mother nurtured them into the faith. Not only taught them how to pray, but also nurtured them in the faith. And we need someone today uh, to nurture us in our faith because our faith could not grow by itself. We have to learn from others, and we thank God that this is the uh, day uh, when Jarvis uh, feel the lady began to put in legislation to make Mother Day a national holiday. We thank God for that. But that should not have been done by that. The Mother Day should be always a day that we celebrate, whether it's a recognized day or not recognized day. But mothers are special. Mothers are angels sent from God to help us, uh, to guide us, to love us, and to pray for us. And the last thing I'll say is that in terms of prayer, when you've got a praying mother, when you have a praying mother, things are going to work out the way that God wants them to work out. And we thank God for mothers who pray, who mothers who teach others to pray, and a mother who prays today. And again, we thank God. There are times that as children, I know myself, uh, that we cause our mother to become upset, angry, but you never see it. You never would know. If they were mad at you, now you might see a, uh, something come flying by your head, or, <laughs> or you might hear my whole name mentioned, uh, but at the same time, uh, they love me. But, but when the storm is over, they'll still your mother. No matter what time of the day is, where, and, uh, and then we, we thank God for that. And one last thing I'm going to share is that when I first began the college, up at Livingstone College of Salisbury, North Carolina, and I know that my mother didn't have much, working hard. I was the first of six children to go to college. Uh, not that we had planned, uh, but at the same time, she would always give me what she had. And every now and then, she would slip a $5 bill in my hand. Know that she didn't, couldn't afford it, did it, but, but did it. A mother love goes beyond their own selfish needs. They, mother love goes out to all of us. And I, and, I, and, I, and I felt bad about taking it, but then I was glad she did, but at the same time. So therefore, the shoes on the, on the feet. When my wife and I got married, everywhere we went, we always took our mother. When if she felt up to it, she went. I'm glad we did. Those are the times that you cannot take back. And there were some fun moments that we had together, and uh, at the same time, we thank God for that. So now, was I trying to pay my mother back? No. I'm just showing her how appreciative I was for her making sacrifices for all of us, and all six of us got grown. All six of us never met Mr. Mill, and we thank God for her advice. Even though my mother died about six, seven years ago, I still remember Mama. There are some things she taught me, values that she instilled in me, that we always will have and love. So now, happy Mother's Day to all of you. I don't know your situation or what you're going through or will go through, but know that God is able to keep us all together as a family. Thank God for mothers who took the time to pray for us, to, took the time to nurture us, and took the time to love, love us despite of our, our attitude. We thank God. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for mothers. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to celebrate and to express, oh God, as a, as a church, openly. And God, there are things that we want to say, oh God, and, and as we begin to journal things we want to say to them, oh God, let us do so. God, for healing does come that way as well. In your name we pray. Bless us, oh God, 
this Mother Day and all other days. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. For years, uh, we, we did the uh, faith of our mothers as a closing hymn and substituted the words from far faith of our fathers. Uh, please stand as you're able to as we... Before we leave, lift your hand towards heaven and repeat after me. Faith of our mothers. Faith of our mothers. Faith of our mothers. Faith of our mothers. And faith of our mothers. Faith of our mothers. Now and forever. And now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for mothers. Do some profession today.